What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm our online campus director. I'm so glad that you're with us for Pumpkin Week. Whoop, whoop. Uh, today, my guest is my very good friend, my coworker, Pastor Jordan Irwin. Hello. Hello, Jordan. I love to be introduced as someone's coworker. That's yeah. my well, favorite. I said my very good friend first. <laughs> yeah. But was it? I think it was. It was not too long ago where. I think Hattie just referred to us as her coworker or something. I had as she introduced. It that was doesn't very sound right. Uh, we have double producers, but we're not. Gonna, hold on, we're not going to the Ooh, producer camp. Wait yet. a little bit, because uh, yeah, we're going to wait a little bit. But as you can see, it's Pumpkin Month, and if I put this yes. here, it drives Hattie nuts. Yes, it does. Please move that back. <laughs> <laughs> what if I put it here, Hattie? No, it. <laughs> Let's keep moving the show on. Please keep it in place. Maybe like right there. Uh, we have double producers today, uh, and it's pumpkin month, and all the treats are hey, on the producer table. Uh, so. I am I am waving, even though we haven't gone to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we we need to say a quick uh, we miss you to Olivia, yeah. who is going to be a big part of a pumpkin week. But um, did I say pumpkin month earlier? It's not pumpkin month. It's if pumpkin I said month. That. It's pumpkin week. Um, I think Olivia October is has pumpkin a, Olivia has a sick child at home, so Olivia is not able to be with us. But Jordan's filling in admirably, and we're very excited. <laughs> I'm admirable. You are. You are an admirable <laughs> fill-in. But we're still sad, Olivia. Yes, we are. <laughs> Please move that pumpkin back. I should have taped it down. I didn't know this was going to be a problem. <laughs> For the next nine minutes, we're just going to move the pumpkin and watch hand oh, reactions. Uh, no, but as you can see on the producer table, um, we have a. A uh, variety of pumpkin treats. There are uh, pumpkin bars, which are a little closer to pumpkin cake. Um, <laughs> Looks amazing. But they, they smell, and I think they're going to taste very good. They uh, look great. But those were made by my lovely wife, uh, Joanna, who is in the room. Everyone say hi to Joanna. Yay. Everyone Joanna. can jump in the chat right now if you're joining us live and say hi to Joanna. She's giggling. Uh, <laughs> she gave a peace right sign now. as well. She gave a peace sign. That is pretty cool. You don't even give peace signs when mm -hmm. you're off. I only wave. No, wow. yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe we should have um, a little bit of the behind the scenes for secrets. Joanna. <laughs> Do you have the thunderous applause? Uh, it's not. In, it's in, it's in, not no. sent to record. So we. <gasps> oh, Whoa, oh, I heard it. For Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have pumpkin muffins, Ooh, which what? Olivia made for us and had to be picked up this morning. Yes. Uh, but we're thankful. Thank you, Olivia, for the pumpkin muffins. And then you're you've been. Bragging, oh, that's for, you're very Vanna White, like that's very good. Uh, pumpkin scones that you've been bragging about Ooh, for a couple mm -hmm. weeks. They look very, very good. They look very they look good. good. I believe. I think, have I had these before? Probably. I, I make like them at least once every year. year. And they were not terrible to consume. Uh, what a nice compliment. I'm from Minnesota, so that's the nicest thing you can Thank say you. about something. I'll take it's, that. It's not bad. That's like a huge compliment. Uh, can we pause real quick? I know the pumpkin's been adjusted. Can we please move it back? <laughs> Oh my word! Whoa! What How happened? did that end up there? That's so strange. Okay, the show can go on. <laughs> and then Michael, uh, now Jordan, this I didn't let you know what was on. I don't Michael, know. Michael, could you go bring that. the? Keep, Are you ready for keep it? Keep it keep it covered. Oh. Oh. But you, could you bring it over here? You want it over there? Yeah. That's I'm Jordan, gonna guess it has Jordan something to do with pumpkin. Jordan doesn't know what's under the. Um, it's a towel. We all don't under the really. Towel. I mean, that, we, that's a fair point. But last kind of so last week when we were discussing pu pumpkin week. Disgusting or disgusting? No, well, it might be disgusting. I don't know. Please bring that pumpkin Michael over here. Michael mentioned that he makes a dinner in a pumpkin. And we all laughed and we're like, haha, Michael made a funny. And then uh, we're, out, we're you're just back is to the camera while you do that. No, we're back, everybody. And then Michael uh, reaffirmed, no, that's I actually that's make something he called does. dinner in a pumpkin. It's for real. I was really hoping um, it was a 2009 Mazda underneath there. I have, what do I do with this pumpkin? Oh, hey there we go. that's pretty good. All right, Jordan, would you uh, help me reveal dinner in a pumpkin? Ooh, ooh. Okay. Wow. Oh, well, it's, it's a pumpkin. A, yep, it's a pumpkin. So far, what I expected. <laughs> the best part, you got to look at the front first. Uh, I go around and look. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. <laughs> I have to tell you guys. Oh, is that on camera? Or we should, that, it, are it should be on the camera, uh, <laughs> but it is in the directions that you have to draw a face. On the pumpkin. On the pumpkin before you cook it. It has to be a, right. a bean, I'm gonna, a sentient bean. I'm going to film uh, opening the pumpkin here, uh, if I can ever find my camera. It's happening. Where? How many life. times have you made this, Michael? I have never made it. Oh, oh. But so you've this had is my it. first time. This right. is your first dinner in a pumpkin. So, hold we, on. Wait we have for a, it. Wait have for you it. partaken in dinner oh, in yeah. a pumpkin? Okay. My wife, I just found out this last, last night, uh, my wife's aunt made it for their family in like sixth grade or she was a sixth grader oh, or something wow. okay. 
And they, the, the whole family <laughs> liked it so much that um, Melissa's mom got the recipe, and they've had it like wow. once a year since. That's so. oh, amazing. Wow. This is a little That's a great tradition. behind the scenes look of our super fancy setup. There's my wife, Joanna, if, should, we, if we end up using this shot or not. Yeah, All you, right. You should film in uh, Do you want me to set a portrait. Oh, all right, hold on. Let me stop. Let me stop. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Let's do this. Hey, everybody. This is really important. Uh, and there's Joanna again. All right, so here, here comes the, the dinner in a pumpkin reveal. Ooh. What Steam is it? It's and everything. Oh, wow. Whoa. It it looks like mush, but it looks like delicious mush. That looks like it dinner in a pumpkin. Um, I had to sample some. I'm night. pretty I'm pretty excited. Here's a hat, you know. Yeah. yeah, you have to wear that. Actually, that was part of. Ooh. the... Oh yeah, we yeah. didn't tell him we that. Forgot did we? To tell you. Sorry, I'm just a fill in. I can't, now, couldn't was possibly. Was this your surprise, Michael? What's the face? Because you said you had a surprise. Yeah. No, 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 no. There's. Okay. Uh, I need my. Actually, Joanna, could you bring me my backpack? It's right There's by your more feet. of a surprise than just dinner and a pumpkin. I really, oh, with a not, face. It's another a, dinner element. I feel like element. we need more it's a time if we don't start consuming <laughs> six minutes. some of the pumpkin. The pumpkin You're really making a debut today, yeah. Joanna. That oh one, there goodness. she was again. If, the, well, that how, that how, depending on how we edit it. Yeah. So this, this, is is my, again. <laughs> this is my bonus. I can eat those. I don't know if you uh, guys are a fan of pumpkin seeds, yes. but I got to make oh. roasted pumpkin seeds nice. last Ooh. night, and so I'm going to share these. So it's like an extra pumpkin thing. More for pumpkin? pumpkin? Oh That's my goodness, excellent. there's so many. <laughs> That's excellent. Are you are you creating I'm gonna, plates? I'm plating stuff for you guys. That's excellent. Yes. Uh, so it so when good. you eat dinner in a pumpkin, oh. mm -hmm. it so it's it's basically ground beef, some seasonings, Ooh. and rice mixed together. Yum okay. yum yum. And uh, then you're supposed to scoop that on your plate and then grab a chunk of the yeah. inside of the pumpkin and then add oh. some add some butter to the like pumpkin with, uh, as well spoon? as salt and pepper. And oh, I don't know. Oh, we have salt. I so might have to have you do the ideal sure. amounts. Thank you. For Thank that George, first bit. As our guest, uh, here's your first. There's your your plate of pumpkin. We have yeah, this all the all the pumpkin. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know if this is enjoyable for you guys to watch at all, but we're pretty excited to consume all of the. All There's of the so many things. Items. Oh my goodness! I'll <clears> tell you, you get Hattie. yours here. Oh, you need a fork. Are we yeah. rating these or just eating them and then? I think we're just eating them. I don't know if uh, as nice uh -oh. as possible. Ooh. We got extras. We're gonna pretend that I caught the first one. <laughs> oh, magic of editing. What are you, CD you. Lamb? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Topical reference. <laughs> joke only we get, and it's right, only we, funny this week. What are you going with first? Um, let's try the let's try the muffin, the muffin. first. Yeah, so that's a quick, easy one. Happy mm -hmm. pumpkin yeah. week, everybody! Thanks for hanging out with us on the lobby. I hope that you. We talked about it last week, so I hope you made some pumpkin treats or acquired Ooh, some pumpkin yes. treats to join us. All right, pumpkin muffin time. Thank you, Olivia. We want to hear your oh, wow. uh, your best like British Bake Off uh, like food commentary. You know, like tell we, us your thoughts. Is it worth a handshake? Yeah, I was gonna say we own, No one wants to hear anybody's British Bake Off commentary other than yours because you brought the accent. Well, out. I'm not eating it, so it's hard for me to. Why? D oh yeah, you're eat, not eating just one. Eat your pumpkin seeds and and tell us what you think seeds. of the pumpkin uh, seeds. The muffin was good. Coffee. Yeah, Let's I thought the story. muffin was uh, very uh, sweeter than I thought. Okay. But very moist, yeah, which was nice. Moist. That's, right. mm -hmm. that's uh, a good. What are there raisins in this? No. Chocolate chips. Yes. Ooh. Is there raisins? Chocolate no, chips really like in the scone. They're oh, little. The scone. They're a little better when they're slightly warmed up. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I do remember eating this last year. This may be my first um, pumpkin items of the year. This so maybe I'm just realizing that pumpkin year. is a lot more sweet than I think it is, <laughs> because that was also well, like that was really really good. Part of our discussion last week, I think, how dinner and a pumpkin came up was. Hattie and I had a very firm stance that pumpkin should be sweet. Oh, like instead of like Because I ranted against pumpkin soup. More squashy. Oh. Yeah. Um, I would eat pumpkin which soup My though. dad posted in the comments of our service <laughs> on YouTube about how good pumpkin soup is, which probably is the reason I had to eat pumpkin soup as a child. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I hate pumpkin soup. <laughs> I would try pumpkin soup. <laughs> so I've never yeah. had it, but I've heard All good right, let's, things. All right, should we try the uh, pumpkin Yeah, bar I got to get a little bit of this cake. stuff. That, I can... I mean, smell the, the, the smell is just mm -hmm. like wafting in the best way over here. It smells very good. <clears throat> Ooh. It worked that's as a bar. It still works as a bar. This is a really Mighty fine. This is a good bar, but it's like um, it's like reminiscent to something I've had in my childhood, but I'm not sure. Like, Probably like a pumpkin bar. <laughs> not. It's not like <laughs> like like more like an event. I mean, you know. Oh, oh like it's bringing you back. Joanna. Yeah, it's like bringing me oh, back wow. to my childhood. That's high praise. It's wow. bringing him back to All his right. childhood. It's, mm -hmm. it's dinner and a that pumpkin time. That looks amazing, Michael. This doesn't look bad. I'm pretty excited about it. 
Do you mm -hmm. have, a, have you created room? I've made a little pumpkin uh, space <laughs> for the rice and Jordan will make room. The rice don't and beef forget, for Don't pumpkin. forget to um, scoop a little pumpkin. Yeah, do you need a Need help scooping some pumpkin? Yeah, I think you yeah. should come help you us scoop come the get pumpkin. Us the, we want to make sure like, we do it properly. The right amount of pumpkin I've and butter and salt and pepper. Before. I don't know that there is a right amount. It's mostly um, just how much you want. As, just so you know, amount. we have about. We're I about want enough 10 to know minutes. I have it. We're gonna. It, it, oh, that is a lot of pumpkin. Oh no, it's fine. That's a lot of pumpkin. Ooh. How much butter do I put on all of this pumpkin? This is like kind of like zucchini noodles. I bet the uh, pumpkin is a, that's probably a good addition. Yeah, I'm gonna actually get myself pumpkin. I feel like that's oh, yeah. a lot, a lot of butter. I love that, that you guys oh, yeah, are yeah. digging out of a pumpkin. I'm right sad. Now. I mean, if, there's, yeah, if this is really good, I might just eat if this for lunch. If you carry the show quick while we scoop oh, pumpkin yeah. and. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. So I was thinking that we've got a lot go. of great pumpkin things on our plate, but we're just scratching the surface. <laughs> Of, of what? A pumpkin. <laughs> oh. And so we're fitting a lot into today's right now, episode Michael of the lobby. Right now, literally scratching, scratching the, the surface, surface of a pumpkin. pumpkin. You know, next week um, we could talk about um, pumpkin delicious. carving tips. <laughs> we could talk about, um, we could revisit the kayaking in a pumpkin. How long and does see it take you to scoop pumpkin? We can make that yourself. happen because I really think <laughs> we should make that happen. Olivia really wanted you guys to make kayaks for your cats last week. That is something. Not this year. Not this year. So um, I'm the fill-in for the kayak cack person? Yeah, that's, that's who you're replacing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. What does that say about me? Uh, you are also a cat person, so, you know, it works. I got that's a true. lot of butter on my fork, and I can't get rid of it. That's and I okay. Just put, put it on your pumpkin. Me another fork? Just put it on your pumpkin. <laughs> what? There you go. Okay. Uh, I, can't, I can't get it off. I wanted ready? to wait for David, David but he's it. having butter issues. <laughs> all right, let's, let's do this thing. You okay, ready? Is it really you, that big? Do you eat all of it at the same time? Yeah, but that's got to be the only way to do it, right? Can. You can okay, one, two, three. Cheers. Ooh, that's amazing. It's not too much pumpkin. No, it is not. That's very good. Dinner <laughs> and a pumpkin. I still prefer my vision of Hattie sitting inside a giant pumpkin, just eating like a random dinner. I don't, it's dinner. not too late. So if you have a giant pumpkin, please pumpkin send mine. that. But can you get your uncle to mail his here? I this, is, this is great. <laughs> mail it. Um, we're well over our time. Yes. So we're oh, gonna no. we're gonna sit and continue to consume all of our pumpkin stuff because um, it's really good. Uh, thank you, That's Michael. Fantastic. Thank you, You're Hattie welcome. and Michael and Joanna and Olivia My for making pleasure. all the pumpkin things. Thunderous applause. Um, yeah, thunderous applause again. <laughs> Thank you to uh, everybody for joining us. Uh, I hope watching us eat pumpkin stuff was fun. <laughs> you guys always it's seem to fun. like when we have like a theme month um, and you got a theme week today. So, um, but we do love all of you. We're so excited that you're here. We have some some really cool worship today um, and another amazing message from Pastor Mike. So uh, we're excited for the series to continue. We love you and we'll see you in just a minute. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. We're so glad that you've joined us for our service today. It is week three of our series, Threads. It has been an awesome mini-series, mm -hmm, yeah. a part of our giant series. I get confused when I talk about it, it's, but it's not that it confusing. Is, it's a little tricky. Yeah, but we're in <laughs> we're in the first mini-series, Threads, yes. of our giant series, Greatest Story Ever Told, and it's been so cool. We're going has, all the way through yeah. the Bible. Yeah, and a shout out to our gatherings. We're so happy that you're joining yes, us. Yes, we love our gatherings. Yes, we do. Um, and before we get into the amazing message from Pastor Mike, we have a really cool time of worship. So would you join us for that?
something I won't be 
Well, hey again, church. Thanks so much for joining us today. We hope that you had a great time of worship. I love our worship yes. team. Thank you for being oh, on that. You're welcome. It was so good. <laughs> so good. And we just want to encourage you, wherever you're joining us at today, chat in the chat box. Yeah. We would love to know your name. Share a fun emoji with us, maybe where you're joining us from. Uh, we just want to learn who joins us every week as part of our church family. Uh, and also in the chat right now, there is the Connect card, Michael's favorite thing ever in the whole world. You can check boxes. Yes, <laughs> check some boxes if you're looking for more information uh, and just how you can get connected with us as a church, uh, be sure to fill that out. Yeah, and right now in the chat below, you can uh, find a link to our New Hope Here Kids. Mm -hmm. And it's a great time of worship for uh, your children, ages, what, little preschool kids. to elementary, little kids. <laughs> yes, very specific. All the same. <laughs> uh, but yeah, check that out. Pastor Andrea, Pastor Anna, they get together, do a fun game. There's a time of worship and then also some teaching. So uh, grab a second device, hand that to your kid, and they can they can have a good time uh, just learning more about God. Yeah, always so good. We love watching and learning <laughs> from do. them too. It's always so, so good. Yeah. <laughs> and we just want to take a moment, church, and, and just pause and uh, give back to God his tithes in our offering. And we just want to say thank you so much for all of you who faithfully mm -hmm. give, who allow us to keep doing this ministry to reach lost people all over uh, our nation, all over yeah. our world. Uh, and so uh, for those of you who call New Hope here, your home church. Uh, click that link that's in the chat right now. All the information's on the screen, and we'll just take that time to give. Yeah, church, let's pray together. <clears throat> uh, God, we thank you so much uh, that we get to come together and, and worship as a church family. Um, and we thank you for the faithful givers that Hattie just talked about. And, and we just ask that you uh, you just bless what comes in and, and help us to, as a church, to use it uh, for your glory. Um, God, right now we, just, we pray that you uh, just work in our lives especially as Pastor Mike shares the message. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, be with us, change our hearts, change our minds, God, and, and help us to have a, a great rest of our day. We love you. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.
Hey, New Hope here. Welcome to week three of The Greatest Story Ever Told. This has been such a fun and rich series already. And I got to ask you, have you gotten your book yet? Have you gotten in a small group yet? And I know for some it's like, well, the book's easy. Getting in a small group, uh, do I really need to? And I really want to encourage you, it's not too late. Years ago when I was in college, and it's getting increasingly years ago, we did kind of an informal study. We went to a couple different churches and we interviewed people after the church service, then later on in the day after lunch, and then later that evening, and then later that week, and even a week or two later. And we asked them what the pastor preached on. And honestly, as a person studying for the ministry, it was kind of discouraging. Because especially the further you got from the weekend, the less people remembered what the pastor preached on. But then we asked another question. The, the other question was, what changed in your life because of the message? Because we don't necessarily need to remember specifically what the pastor said, as long as we, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, are changed by it. And a huge majority of people, I mean, overwhelming majority of the people said, I don't think anything changed. But there was a small group of people who could not only kind of recall parts of what was taught, but they could point consistently week after week to something that changed in, your in their life. And we started digging in. What changed? And of course, you can probably guess the answer. They hung out with a small group of people and they talked about it together, they wrestled together, they processed together, they held one another accountable and encouraged one another. So I really want to encourage you. It's not just because I think it's a good idea, but I think it's, beca but it's because it's God's idea. If you're new to us, we're walking in this series through the big story of the Bible, and we're stopping at some of the smaller stories along the way. And as we walk through it, we're looking at the story through three different lenses, kind of three different parts of the story. And as I talk about these three different parts of the story, I'm physically just to help us moving to different parts. So we start with the upper story. And the upper story is where we look at what God was doing. God is always at work and he's always involved, even when it looks like he's not involved. Because sometimes lower story it feels like he's not involved. It looks like he's not involved. And we wonder, this does not make sense at all. And so we ask the question, what was actually going on here on earth? What's the historical context? These are real people, real places, real feelings. And then every once in a while, we'll go to kind of make it more personal. We'll go to our story, my story. Why does what we're talking about matter to us? Is it just some information we need? Is it just to help us get kind of a, a dopamine hit that we went to church and we felt good? Or is something really need to change in our lives? So we'll stop here at my story from time to time. So we got it? Upper story, lower story, my story. And that's what we're going to be talking about. And, and we've broken this entire series into kind of mini-series, or if you think Netflix, seasons, you know. Every big story has multiple seasons. Season one has multiple stories, season two, and so on and so forth. And these first six weeks, we're calling it Threads, because we're looking at how from the very beginning, there are these kind of threads that God began to weave into the story that connect every part of it, upper story to what was happening here on earth and ultimately connects to our story. So here's how I want to start. Grab your story and turn to chapter three, or if you have your Bible, you want to turn to a little bit later in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 41 or so. We'll get there in a moment. We're going to go to our, the next part of our story, the story of Joseph. The journey of a young, spoiled brat who went to become a slave, who went to become the assistant to Pharaoh, the assistant to the greatest king on earth at the time. But I want to start with a question. Here's the question. Have you ever been betrayed by someone you loved and trusted? Have you ever been betrayed by someone you loved and trusted? And some of us... Probably, probably a lot of us have broken heart stories, right? A boyfriend or girlfriend who broke our heart, maybe especially the first time. And everyone else maybe knew you were broken up before they told you 
Or maybe someone who gossiped about you and you thought you could trust them, but they said things behind your back. Maybe someone stole from you. That's what happened to me. I remember back in high school, I had this duffel bag, and for some reason, I thought this duffel bag was something that I wanted. I saved up my money for it. I don't know whether it was the cool thing or the great thing, or whether it was a brand name. I honestly don't remember, but I knew it mattered to me, and I bought this, and uh, and all my friends kind of looked at it, and they liked it, and I I hung it in my uh, locker one day, and I came back to my locker later in the day, and it was gone. And I looked down because I knew I'd locked my locker and my lock was unlocked. And I thought, what in the world? I know I locked my locker. How did my duffel bag disappear? Next day, I was walking through the halls and I saw my duffel bag. It was on the shoulder of a girl whose locker was next to mine, a girl who I secretly kind of liked and talked to and was kind of interested in and when I confronted her she denied it and so other people had to get involved and found out that she actually liked the duffel bag a whole lot more than she liked me and so she acted interested in me one day and watched me do my combination and so she learned my combination and stole my backpack. And I was heartbroken. I mean, as much heartbroken as you can be, you know, as a freshman, sophomore, it just messed me up. I just felt betrayed. And I know that's that's maybe a silly story. And some of you have a lot more painful stories. Friends, people you love, people that you thought would act a certain way and they didn't act that way and it it hurts. So here's what I do. I want to go to the story of a guy by the name of Joseph. And he, his story is in about the last third of the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. This is where all the threads begin. And his story starts from where we left off last week. We were talked about Abram, later named, changed his name to Abraham, the father of many, and how Abraham eventually had a son. His name was Isaac. And neither Abraham or Isaac were perfect people. And as we fast forward through the story and you read some of the story, you find their descendants weren't perfect either. In fact, we find out that Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. In fact, Jacob's name meant cheater, meant deceiver. And Esau was kind of a selfish, self-obsessed kind of guy. These were not perfect people. In fact, let me just take us back to a portion of one of the threads from last week that keeps coming up over and over and over. And we'll see this threaded throughout every story. God isn't looking for perfect people. Abraham wasn't. Isaac wasn't. Jacob wasn't. And neither will be any of the stories. Neither was Joseph. Jacob eventually, long story, and we don't have time to get into it, marries not one, but two women. Again, not a perfect guy. And uh, ends up being cheated on by, or cheated by his father-in-law, you know, and having to marry these two sisters. And ends up having 12 kids. One of them's name is Joseph. And Joseph was the son of his favorite wife. And a spoiled brat because he was... Daddy Jacob's favorite. You know, one of the things that our family jokes about is uh, every once in a while we'll tell the boys, even especially as they've gotten older, you know, you have the opportunity to decide today which one of you is going to be our favorite. And we just kind of joke about that, or one of them will do something and say, well, you know what, you just lost favorite status today. And, And it's fun to joke about, but it's not so funny when the spoiling and the favorite are just dysfunctional and messed up where like in Joseph, Joseph got Armani, Joseph got the Porsche, Joseph got everything and all the other brothers got hand-me-downs and seconds and the old used car and Joseph got everything he wanted from his dad and not only did he get everything he wanted but daddy told everybody that he was his favorite and parents here's just a bit of wisdom okay bit of wisdom You should never declare a favorite child. I know. Sometimes one of them is a little bit more favorite than the others. Probably okay because I'm an uncle to declare a favorite niece or nephew. Because No, I'm just saying. But the point is, we know what happened with Joseph and his brothers, right? They kept score. 
because we keep score, right? I mean, let's just go to Laura's story, real human history. This is what was really happening. Every family has an opinion, right, about who's daddy's favorite, who's mom's favorite, who got spoiled, and who didn't get spoiled. I've sat with I don't know how many families, especially when a family member has passed away, and they begin to tell the stories, and there's always this kind of banter back and forth. Some of it's serious. Some of it not so serious about who's the favorite, who's not the favorite. And that's what happened. They all kept score. They began to hate uh, Joseph. The resentment began to build up. And Joseph and their dad and Joseph's dad did not do anything to help this. So we get the picture. Lower story. Joseph, Joseph's brothers hate him, understandably. And so they're all sent out to work. Joseph didn't have to go out to work. He stayed home. See, lower story, see what was really happening? This is the context. And so then one day, Daddy sends Joseph to check on big brothers. He's the snitch. Not great parenting here. And they see him coming. The reason they see him coming, we find out, is because Daddy gave him a coat, a coat of many colors. Probably not tie-dye like this, but a bright shiny coat that they could see coming and they saw him coming and one of the brothers says let's kill him and you think that's harsh someone else else says that's a little harsh let's not kill him let's fake his death and let's sell him into slavery but let's tell dad that he's dead and so that's what they do they fake his death they take his coat uh, of many colors and they dip it in animals blood and they sell him to a slaver going by and they say goodbye to the, all of their problems and they go back and they tell dad little joseph is dead and they had no idea how much it would break their father broke their father's heart he didn't recover for decades he's in grief for years they're sorry, but it's too late. It's done. The slave train eventually gets to Egypt, and Egypt is sold to a military guy by the name of Potiphar. And Joseph just does the best he can. He ends up working hard. He ends up becoming trust, trusted. And the Bible says that because he did his best, God begins to bless everything he does. And again, here's what's happening from lower story to upper story. We find God is always at work and he's always involved. And just because Joseph felt like he'd been abandoned, he'd been rejected, and he had by his family, God didn't abandon him. God didn't reject him. God was at work and God notices. And so God begins to bless him. And pretty soon he's entrusted with more and more and more. And so you go back to lower story. He's trusted more and more and more. And finally, He's in charge of everything. He's second in command for this military guy. But the problem is, the Bible says that now little Joseph is all grown up and he's not scrawny, he's ripped. <laughs> and he's hot and his boss's wife says, I want you in my bed. And Joseph says, no. And so she lies about him. She accuses him of raping her. And so he's thrown into prison. Not a, not a regular prison, but a political jail, when not like a modern jail. It's the worst of the worst of the jails where people are thrown to die, thrown to be forgotten. But again, upper story, God does not give up on him. God protects him, and God continues to bless him. And so Joseph works hard, and he's eventually entrusted with more and more, even though he's in jail. And God allows him some, some friendships and some relationships. And lower story, he begins to befriend two guys who were down on their luck, who were thrown in jail as well. They had dreams, and God allows him the opportunity to interpret their dreams. One of them ends up not getting out of jail alive. The other one gets out of jail alive and says, I'll remember you. I'll remember you, Joseph but he's forgotten. And now I want to move from Laura's story to my story. And I just want to ask this question, and it's a fair question. What do you do? What do you do when you try and do everything right 
and everything still goes wrong. Do you begin to question, God, what's going on in that upper story? You begin to look around you and notice everything in our lower story? What is going on in your story when you do everything you right and you feel like everything is going wrong? Because here's Joseph. Think about this. He was young. He was spoiled. But what we didn't talk about is God gave him dreams. God gave him dreams that were prophetic that said, someday I have a purpose for you. In fact, I want to prepare you for that purpose. Someday you'll deliver your family. Someday you'll save your family. Someday you'll lead your family, even though you're the youngest. And Joseph, in his immaturity, just began to lord it over all of his brothers, which only added to the hate. Then he sold into slavery. But he tries to do everything right and everything goes well. Then he's accused of a false crime and he's thrown in prison. He tries to do everything right. He's entrusted with more and more. And God uses him in this miraculous moment to interpret a dream. He interprets a dream and one of his friends from prison gets out of jail and gets, and gets put in a spot where he has the opportunity to get Joseph out of jail and he's forgotten again. What do you do when you try and do everything right and everything goes wrong? I just want us to think about that for a moment because that's part of Joseph's story. But that's also a thread that connects with our story. And Joseph is in prison for years, but he still tries to be faithful and God still blesses. Not sure how blessed he felt, but eventually Pharaoh has a series of dreams. The king of Egypt has a series of dreams and the guy who all those years before had, inter had, had his dream interpreted by Joseph goes, Oh, I forgot. Pharaoh, can I tell you about this guy I met in prison? Not exactly a great opening line to the king of Egypt. But he interprets dreams. He did it for me. And so Joseph is called up. He's cleaned up. And he's called before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh says, can you interpret my dreams? And listen, in Genesis 41, if you, if you have, have your books from the story, it's on, let's look, it's on page, it's on page 33. Listen how Joseph replies. This is the, the one who was the spoiled brat, lording it over his brothers and his brothers ha hated him. He's asked to interpret. He knows God is with him, but he says, I cannot do it. But God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. He's been in prison for years. This is not the kid with the coat. And Joseph models something about what it means to follow God that's a thread that we're follow, we'll follow in every other story that God uses in a significant way. And if you want God to use you in a significant way, this is a thread you can say yes to as well. Here it is, thread number one, the more I trust God to write my story, the more he does with my story. Now, Joseph didn't know this as a kid. He was a punk kid. He thought the story was all about him. But, and here's, here's what happened. So lower story, he went through humility. He went through pain. He went through grief. But upper story, God was at work. God was involved. See the thread? We've been attaching this. God was working in his life and working in the lower story using things that were not easy, were not fun, that were painful, that were harsh. But the only way to get Joseph's attention. And sometimes what's difficult for us, God is actually using to form us. And if we say yes, upper story, to God writing our story, that means lower story, he does more with our story. And that, of course, affects our story. Because when we think about this, when God created us in the garden, he breathed his life into us. And whenever we move away from him, we move away from life. Sin separates. That's the thread we've talked about. And we keep coming back to that. And when we move away from life, what's the result? No life, less life, lack of life, death. And so whenever I try to pick up the pen of my life, what am I doing? I'm removing God 
from the author of my life. And that's what Joseph did, is he tried to pick up the pen of his life, but he had to learn to surrender the pen to let God write the story of his life. And he interprets the dreams, and he's made assistant to Pharaoh. He moves, lower story, from slave to assistant to Pharaoh, second in charge. And he's put in a position to save all of the people of the known world during what would be seven of the most devastating climate change years that ever recorded in history to date. Seven years of food shortage. And God had promised that this group of people, lower story, this group of people, the descendants of Abraham would become a nation. And now they're starving to death. But upper story, they didn't know that God God had been at work and God was involved and he, even through all of their sin, all of their mistakes, all of their resentment, he chose to redeem it and still pursue and he puts Joseph in the perfect place to fulfill his promise, to build the nation we talked about last week. And so that happens. And everything goes south. And people start to starve. But Joseph is in the right place at the right time to save his family. And, and here's a lower story moment we just need to wrestle with. Because what was happening at our, on earth? Why was God allowing a famine? Why were people starving? Why didn't God just send rain? Why didn't he just drop food from the sky? So we need to back up here. We, and we have to ask the question, what's God up to? Again, it's an upper story question. And he's up to what he's always been up to. Thread number two, God always invites us into a relationship. And this thread started way back in the garden. He handcrafted Adam and Eve, invited them into a relationship. That meant that they could choose. Having no choice is a robot, not a relationship. And here again, God was at work and always inviting. We said he began this thread of offering hope. And he's saying, if you trust me with the story, I'm, I'm going to weave hope into it. I'm going to bring it back around. You're going to be able to get back to the garden. And we understand this. Upper story, God is always at work. This is what he's doing. Lower story, it looks like things are out of control and confused. And that takes us that takes us deep into this. What does God do? Lower story. Lower story comes from the upper story. God's always at work. And what's the primary work? He comes to us. See this repeating thread? And he invites us back into relationship. And he always invites a person to be the catalyst for what he's going to do. He invites Joseph. And by the way, he's inviting you. We'll come back to that in a moment. So let's just review. Thread number one, the more I trust God to write my story, the more he does with my story. Thread number two, God always invites us to a relationship. Joseph had to learn those two things before the third thread would become clear for him. And here's the third thread. It is in the darkest moments when God's greatest work is being done. Catch this. This is a repeating thread that'll take us all the way to the cross, all the way forward in the time to the times of the, of the tribulation, the end of time. In times that seem the darkest, God's greatest work is being done. And for Joseph, it felt like that. And for his brothers, it felt like that. They're starving, and so they come looking for food. And Joseph's dreams from all those years before are fulfilled before us, Joseph's eyes. He's now dressing like an Egyptian. He speaks Egyptian. He has all the makeup of an Egyptian. He, he, they assume he's an Egyptian. They don't know who he is. And, he's, and he has them in his mercy. Now, can I ask you a quick question? Let's go to our story. My story. When that person who betrays you is suddenly at your mercy, what would you do? What would you do when that person who turned their back on you, when that person who betrayed your trust, how would you respond? Joseph is no longer 17. He's no longer a spoiled brat. God has taken him through a story, and he's learned through difficulty and pain to trust God as the author of his story. And that, by the way, 
is, and I'll call it a secret that's not so secret for you and for me, is often the darkest moments of our life when we wonder where God is, what God's doing in the upper story, when we look at our lower story and it feels dark, when God is doing the greatest work and it's in those moments that we can step back and say, God, I don't want to do what Adam and Eve did where they started questioning you and they started minimizing the consequence and they started and, and tried to satisfy themselves. I don't want to take the pen and write my own story like they did before the flood came, like they did before the Tower of Babel, like so many people have throughout history. I want to trust you with the pen for my life. And at this point, Joseph is older and he's learned. This moment, he could write his own story. He could get revenge but he recognizes the thread. That dream all those years before, God was saying, if you trust me with your story, your story will become far greater than if you wrote it yourself. It's in the darkest moments that God will do his greatest work. Let's go back to Joseph's story. Joseph had lived a lifetime of growing and trusting God as the author. And so here he is, he has the opportunity. And of course, they didn't know. They didn't know who he was. And so he begins to ask some questions, some questions that confuse them. And they didn't know he could speak their language, that he would understand them. And he got to hear them talking about him and their own sorrow, their own brokenheartedness about their dad. And, and, so, and he gets so moved by this, he has to excuse himself. And, and there's multiple layers to this story, right, that we don't have time to go into. And finally, as the story goes on, he reveals himself. And when he reveals himself, what are they? Understandably, they're scared. They're scared, and he who's grown up now forgives them. And the family is reunited, and his father moves down. And it all sets up God's plan that was given to Abraham all those years ago for a nation that would point to God. So we look through these threads. The more I trust God to write my story, the more he does with my story. Thread number two, God always invites us to a relationship. Thread number three, it is in the darkest moments when God's greatest work in us is being done. Let's go back to our story. If we fast forward to the end of Joseph's story, Joseph lives to be 110. 110. And 22 years after he was 17, well into his 30s, those 22 years were dark, they were difficult, almost daily struggle just to be alive. But he learned to trust God with his story. And he ended up with 71 more years. As many of them restored to his dad, his relationship restored with his brothers. And he ended up saving his family. And, and why does this story matter? Why does this matter to us? Well, as we've walked through these first three weeks, as we've walked through these early stories of faith, creation, and a little bit of Noah, and Abraham, and now Joseph, we've walked through the entire first book of the Bible, we found that every one of these stories, we know that you know, they're connected because the people are related, but every one of these stories, we find these repeating threads. These are more than just lessons from history. These are truths about who God is. See, the stuff we learn about the fact that God is always at work in the upper story means that he's always at work in my story. When we discover that what doesn't make sense here in human history and happening around us, what doesn't make sense in our story, God is always at work. And here's the thing, here's the thing, and this is our last thread. God will weave every thread of your life into an amazing story if you trust him. There's no such thing as perfect people here on earth. We've messed that up a long time ago, but God still pursues us. And even when you've made all of the wrong choices, he's still at work, he's still pursuing you, and he's still inviting you to be part of his plan. And so here's what I want to do. I, I want to end with two invitations. 
One is for you if you've never trusted God with the leadership of your life. This is an opportunity for you to trust God with the leadership of your life. So I've messed it up. Of course you have. We all have. It's called sin. We talked about that the last two weeks. And that's why God made the covenant with Abraham and walked the path of blood and why ultimately Jesus went to the cross. We talked about that last week. If you didn't, if you didn't join us, go back and listen to this. You don't have to promise to be good. You just have to trust his promise. And so to begin a relationship with God, you let him know you want to trust his promise. God, I want to trust you. Forgive me of my sin. I can't be good enough for you, but you promise to help me become the person that you designed for me to be. You can pray that simple prayer. You can have that conversation. And if you do, it's the first step. It's the first step. And our host team will come back in just a moment to help you know how to follow up on that. But here's another invitation. This is an invitation for those of you who already have a follow, uh, already have a relationship with Jesus and are following Jesus question for you is, with your story, is are you letting him write it? How often do you reach for the pen and say, these moments are too dark. I want to write this. I want to rewrite this. Can I make this part lighter? And the less you trust him with your story, the less your story will become. The more you trust him with your story, the more it will become an amazing story. What's the last thread? God will weave every thread of your life into an amazing story if you'll trust him. And that's not just fictional stories from history. These are real stories of real people in real moments. So this week, I want to challenge you to ask, are you letting him write your story? And ask him for forgiveness for the places that he begins to point out. Lord, forgive me for taking control and making that job decision without you. Forgive me for making that relationship decision without you. Forgive me for not trusting you with my story. Because when you trust his promise, you find that his blessing is always there because he's always pursuing you. We're going to continue on next week. This week, read Joseph's story. Read Joseph's story, read chapter three, and just look for that upper story, lower story, and ultimately my story moment. Have a great week. Well, hey again, church. We hope that you found today's message valuable and that encourages you to take a next step. And it's been so good. It has. I love the series. I, yes. I, know a lot, I know last week in the chat, at least a lot of people were talking about how, how much the series has been already, meaningful for them. And, and they're already excited about next week yep. just to keep learning yep. and growing. And uh, for those of you who prayed the prayer with Pastor Mike yeah. at the end of the message, uh, we just want to encourage you and say we are so excited yep. that you made the decision. And Best decision you will ever make. So good. Yep. We're so pumped. And maybe you didn't pray that prayer, but you did make that decision mm -hmm. to follow the Lord. You don't have to say those exact words uh, to make that decision and as a church we just want to celebrate with you we want to encourage you and then come alongside you with any resources that you might be needing so if that was you text next to 701-501-8002 all of it should come on the screen for yep. you right now uh, check that link out it just has some really good resources to help you on this new journey yeah, first of all, I'm very impressed that you have that number memorized. I do, I got Because I would have just <laughs> had to say, text next to that number that's appearing on oh, the yeah. screen right now. But we do want to make sure that you do that because like Hattie said, um, it, it's such a great decision. It's the best decision you will ever make in your entire life, mm -hmm. the most important next step. Yeah. Um, and we want to come alongside you and, and help you figure out what's next and, and what that means and everything. So mm -hmm. make sure you, you text that number that she just said. Right, text I'm next only going to gonna say number. it once. Yeah. Now it's gone from memory. <laughs> uh, I want to talk a little bit about, about gatherings. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Mike, um, as he was talking about Joseph today, he, he was talking about, are you letting God write your story? And I believe that there's some of us out there that have felt God's call to start a gathering mm -hmm. and you just haven't yet for whatever reason. Maybe you're nervous about it. Maybe you think that can't be me. God wouldn't call me to start a gathering. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not capable. I don't know what to do. And I want to just encourage you from the message today that God has a plan for you. And if you think that yeah. that plan might be starting a gathering, uh, we want to help you. You won't mm -hmm. be all, all on your own. We want to come alongside you and help you. So if you want to even just talk about what that looks like mm -hmm. to start a gathering, there's a link in the chat. <clears throat> there's a real short form that you can fill out 
or you can always just fill out a connect card and say hey I, I want to talk about a gathering and that's not like a commitment you're right. not locked into a 10-year gathering plan we that just means we'll talk about it and, and we'll, we'll let you know what that looks like help how we'll do, help yeah help discern together is yeah. this your next step definitely yeah. yep so uh, go ahead and do that we would love to talk to you about starting a gathering and if you've been enjoying the series which we we all yes, have, we, have uh, we really want to encourage you to check out our podcast because Pastor yes. Mike and you go a little bit deeper every yep. week just into that message because uh, as Pastor Mike has shared he's like, learned so much from the series mm -hmm. and know so much about uh, these scriptures that they just go a little bit deeper so check out the podcast you can find it in all of these places <laughs> YouTube Spotify and Apple Podcasts that was great thank you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're so natural yes. up here as we half of us remember <laughs> half the stuff the other half remembers the other half it takes and it's a really team. good yeah. I really want to encourage you if you've never checked out the Grow Podcast watch it this week mm. because um, I was I feel like I mostly just sat and listened during the Joseph one because I, I just loved it. It mm -hmm. was just incredible teaching from Pastor Mike in that conversational style that I just love. And so I think this is one of the best podcasts that he's done. So wow, yeah, I'll make have sure to check you, it out. Yeah, check it out Make sure me. you check out the Grow podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, we love you, New Hope family. We're so glad that you were here. We hope to see you next week. Until then, let's go and be the church. Here's the problem with athletic tape, taking it off and it sticks to itself and it does not come apart very well. No. Oh no, I got my one chest hair. <laughs> <laughs> Can that Post be service. Post service. Oh, it's still recording? <laughs> Oops.